From wheat to canola now, and a planting update with our extension canola specialist, Josh Bouchong. So well, we're kind of towards the tail end of planting season. Uh, winter canola acres are a little bit less than last year. Uh, not what we were shooting for, but obviously with the conditions and the drought persisting and stuff like that, it's been harder for a lot of farmers. Uh, but uh, Friday was the last planting date for insurance for RMA. Uh, there is a late planting period where they have till the 15th of October, Wednesday. Uh, so if they still need to get in there and plant some canola, uh, they do have that late planting period to work with. They do lose, uh, I believe, 3% of their guarantee per day uh, past that October 10th planting date. Uh, but for the most part, most of our guys got the crop in the ground. A lot of guys are waiting on a little bit of moisture. Bouchong says canola will see a boost in Oklahoma as more counties become insurance eligible. We've gone from 10 program RMA insurance counties to 15 in the state of Oklahoma. It did help get some more guys interested in canola. Uh, in the past, they've had to rely on written agreements to see if they are able to get insurance for canola. Uh, so that does ease a lot of stress on the farmer. Uh, but like I said, a lot of those counties we're still waiting on a rain on. So I would say the rain probably influenced our acres more than anything else. But adding those program counties have definitely uh, helped us out in the long run. It is also important to be out early scouting the crop. If the crop is, uh, say at this stage, where it's one to two true leaves, uh, we still need to get some size on it before winter. Hopefully we'll get some rains. Uh, next week or two to get that crop to the desired size of four to six true leaves and a root diameter about the size of a pencil or greater uh, to really withstand those cold temperatures throughout the winter. And while they're out scouting looking at their stands they need to be looking for worms uh, both army cut worms and the diamondback moth larva uh, can hinder uh, that growth of the plant or thin out the, the crop so uh, a lot of times those army cut worms prefer tilled sandy ground they come in from the Rockies, lay their eggs, uh, they'll more or less prune on the roots throughout the fall and winter. So we have to kind of look for symptomology on the leaves and if we start seeing some stressed areas, maybe some red purple plants, uh, start digging around in the ground, see if we can find some of those worms. The diamondback moth larvae are going to be in the leaves. Uh, the small uh, greenish worm uh, has kind of two chronicles on its tail end. Uh, so be out there looking for those worms. The seed does come with the seed treatment, uh, an insecticide and fungicide, but that insecticide seed treatment's really only good for aphids, uh, which has helped us out a lot, um, uh, but it doesn't do much for Lepidoptera, uh, all of our worms. So get out there, look for worms, look at your stand, uh, and see where you stand going into winter.